what's going to happen is you're going to have uh, jaundice. Your Billy Rubens are going to be high. Your All of your lab works, like your ALP. If my AFP is um, elevated, and remember, AFP is usually on a woman it's pregnancy. But if I'm 50 years old and I have an elevation of AFP, then I have uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. So each one of these has its own hepatitis E virus, hepatitis D virus. Okay. Uh, alcoholic hepatitis is caused from alcohol consumption. On your requisitions, you're going to see ETOH abuse. ETOH abuse. That means that you do have an alcoholic that you're going to be doing. Okay? ETOH. Uh, autoimmune hepatitis. If the autoimmune system attacks the liver, then I have autoimmune hepatitis. So what happens with hepatitis is I have liver cell in, uh, injury, swelling of the cells, which is going to cause my liver to be enlarged, possible necrosis. What does necrosis mean, Dewey? I don't remember. Necrosis. It is dying. The uh, liver cells are dying. Okay. But if you eat better, and you take care of yourself and take your medicine the way that you, you are supposed to, then the liver can regenerate itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. A full minute. It's a massive necrosis of the liver. The liver decreases in size. It could be sudden. It could be severe, leading to shock, coma, and death, depending upon the stages of the liver uh, disease. So the role of sonography in all of this is we're going to evaluate the, the parenchymal changes. Parenchymal changes meaning the borders of. We're going to make sure that we look at the capsule. The capsule will become kind of wavy. At first, with hepatitis, you're going to have an enlarged liver. The longer that you have an enlarged liver, the less that it's working, the more cells that are dying, I develop jaundice, my liver becomes very stiff, and eventually those cells are going to die. So in the acute phase, as the, the cells are trying to fight off the hepatitis, it's going to get hypoechoic, but it's going to be very large due to the inflammation, and inflammation in sonography is hypoechoic. The portal veins are going to be very hyperechoic, giving it the starry, uh, <laughs> starry, starry sky star. sign. Oh, it's starry because sky. of the, the fluid inside the liver. Do what, do we? Uh, you put starry star, so that's why it's starry sky. Oh, starry, yes, yeah, starry star. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'll need to fix that one. So it's a starry sky. So, and that is common because the liver is enlarged. It's adenomous. That's how you describe it is adenomous. It looks fluffy. Okay, it's going to be hypoechoic. And the portal veins are going to be very, very visual. Okay. With hepatitis, the gallbladder wall will be thick. And a thick gallbladder wall is greater than three millimeters. Okay, here's a picture.
picture of hepatitis. A starry sky sign. The portal veins are very echogenic. Okay. So I have attenuation. I mean, it's, it's very hypoechoic. Okay, hypoechoic, because it is adenomous, meaning the body is building up fluid as it's trying to fight uh, the virus that is in the body. In number B, and letter B, it's the exact same patient that just increased the gain, so that way they can see the liver texture okay so you as a sonographer need to know do I increase the gain because if you're looking at the liver you want to see the liver right mm -hmm. and if it's adenomous the only thing that we can do is increase our gain or use our TGC right okay those are our only two options So here is a transverse patient that has acute hepatitis. And you can see that the vessels are creating linear bands that extend all the way out to the periphery of the liver. This is another way that we can demonstrate uh, acute hepatitis. Now, a shepherd, uh huh. Would you say that's also cirrhosis, or is that something different? Cirrhosis is completely different. Okay. Okay, cirrhosis is completely different. Okay, if I had cirrhosis, here's the, the capsule of the liver. And see how the capsule is nice and thin? Mm -hmm. If that capsule was undulated, then I have cirrhosis. I can also use a linear probe to be able to look at this area. What is one thing abnormal on this image that I'm gonna be very careful about turning in is this hyperachoic mass right there. The doctor's going to ask, so you have to get used to looking at the whole picture, okay? You can move your transducer this way or do a heel toe towards the right side to get rid of this image right here because you don't wanna turn this in until you know what it is. Cirrhosis. You have three types of cirrhosis. Mm -hmm. You have alcoholic fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, and cirrhosis. What happens is the liver architect architecture has been compromised and it's going to be changing. The liver cells are dying and that is called necrosis. So the septa will develop between the lobules. The cells will degenerate, but they can regenerate themselves. Here, hang on just a second. Oh, so Mr. Norsworthy held live this morning and said it went good. Nice. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, so the liver is the only organ that can regenerate itself. The hostile tissue, the tissue that has already died, can be removed if they feel like it's, it's needed. Um, 
when the liver gets sick, it, the cells die off and the organ can atrophy. Atrophy means that the organ gets smaller. It's going to be hard for us to see the, the portal system. It's going to be hyperechoic. The venous system, we're not going to be able to see it because it's almost like the, the left, the right, and the middle hepatics get compressed because the liver gets so fibrotic that it squeezes those vessels because they're pliable and it's hard for us to see those. If you're doing an abdominal Doppler, the best bet is to turn on your power color, find those vessels, find out where they are, don't move your hand and turn on regular color. Okay? So if you have any type of a vascular change in the liver, uh, it can cause hypoxia, necrosis, and atrophy that can eventually lead to liver failure. What is hypoxia? No oxygen. No oxygen. No oxygen. Uh, what is portal hypertension? High blood pressure in the portal vein. No portal vein. What about the portal vein? It doesn't have blood. It's not going through. Correct. High blood, blood, blood is uh -huh. not able to go into the liver. Uh -huh. You have hypertension of the of the portal system. The portal system will no longer be basic okay. because usually the portal you can see it go up and down when you breathe your patient. Another uh, how we make that diagnosis and ultrasound is a large plane. Okay. So 49% of liver cirrhosis is contributed to alcohol. It can also happen with viral hepatitis, toxic drug and chemical reactions, biliary obstruction and cardiac disease. So I've been hooked on um, Naked and Afraid <laughs> just to see how they survive. And I watched a series this past week where he ate mushrooms. And he did really good for about two days. And then after that, he started having severe cramps and stuff like that. They rushed him to the hospital. And he was in liver and renal failure eating those mushrooms. He could have eaten those mushrooms if he would have kicked, if he would have cooked them. But you're not supposed to eat those type of mushrooms that he ate um, uh, without cooking them. So, so when scary. when you cook them, down, those uh, toxic <laughs> chemical is released. Yeah. So the, the pastor that I lived with whenever I was going to college, my best friend was a preacher's daughter. So she was going to TWU and I was going to TCJC. And so I lived with her parents and he, her, his parishioners would call him to come and pick mushrooms out of their yards. I, I hate mushrooms. <laughs> we had mushroom breakfast from gravy and oh, it was, it was awful. I, I'm definitely afraid of mushrooms. I don't like any kind of mushroom. Okay. So, uh, necrosis, necrosis can also be caused from glycogen storage disease, hemochromatosis, which is iron, too much iron in your body. Wilson disease, which is too much copper in your body. And galactosemia, it's when people have galactose, they can't digest it, and it builds up sugar in the blood. I had to Google that. <laughs> so cirrhosis can take up stool. The four kinds are alcoholic, 
biliary, host necrotic, and metabolic. Linux is where it has a nodular appearance on the liver surface. And <coughs> we have starry skies and it looks fatty. So your LFTs will be abnormal. Your liver function test will be abnormal. Okay. So will be your AST, your ALT, your ALP could be elevated if you have HCC and your serum albumin. Does anybody remember what albumin does? It's a protein. It's a what? It's the protein in the blood. Yeah, it's a carrier. Yeah. It carries what the liver needs for the rest of the body and carries it through the blood stream to where it needs to go. Did Ann ever come on? I don't think I, so. I texted her. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, you I texted her too. I didn't hear anything from her as well. Okay. Hope she's okay. Oh, she checked the XBIs. <laughs> oh, maybe she's taking her SBI. Mm -hmm. Cool. I like that name. That is that uh, idea. <laughs> <coughs> Be like Uber. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So cirrhosis, you'll have liver atrophy, especially the right lobe. The caudate lobe will be hypertrophy, meaning it will be large. The surface will be nodular, so the capsule capsule will be undulated. The echo texture will be hypo to hyper, echoic. We'll have a hard time seeing the intrahepatic vascularities. More than likely, we're going to see portal hypertension portal hypertension. The blood flow can't get into the liver the way that it's supposed to, so it's going to back up into your spleen. To be able to make the diagnosis of portal hypertension, the portal vein has to be greater than 1.3 centimeters. If, if you feel that the, the, the spleen is a normal size, then you're going to do the portal hypertension. And if it measures 1.3 on inspiration, measure it again with exhalation. Or measure it further up into the liver. Don't make someone have a disease that they don't have. Be very mindful of your measurements. Okay, secondary findings, you'll have high portal hypertension, splenomegaly, you'll have varices. Varices are veins that are enlarged or swollen. Collaterals is what God does for us. And when he makes the blood flow get into the organ a different way. Also, the patient will normally have ascites. Ascites is too much fluid inside the peritoneum. You'll have recanalization of the para umbilical vein off of the left portal vein. What is the para umbilical vein? Y'all remember seeing that? Has anybody seen that recanalization of the para umbilical vein? So inside the falciform ligament, the falciform ligament separates 
the left lobe of the liver into medial and lateral. Inside the fossiform ligament, we have the ligamentum teres. That is the para umbilical vein that can recanalize. You're going to see blood traveling superior to the diaphragm. It's going to arch down underneath the surface of the abdomen, and you're going to follow that uh, vascular blood flow all the way to the belly button. Okay? Esophageal varices. Patricia, I'm sure that you have seen this many times. Okay. People will come in with a GI bleed. Mm -hmm. It is the nastiest thing and the smelliest thing that we ever have to deal with almost in radiology. Because they always order a stat abdomen. (laughs) And it is nasty so what happens you'll see this in alcoholics also where they'll have a GI bleed the the veins around the esophagus very get very enlarged due to the obstructed blood flow through the portal vein so God opens up those collaterals trying to get blood to the liver and in return they have GI bleeds when we look at the spleen you'll have varices there where you'll see like a a cluster of arteries and veins uh, at the hilum of the spleen you can also have a splenorenal shunt uh, and that shunt is where the splenic vein shoots down into the left renal vein so it's trying to get rid of the blood in the spleen and in return it goes through to the left renal vein so your portal vein velocities are often going to be reduced Uh, they're going to become hepatofugal in direction meaning that the portal vein is not taking blood into the liver, so it's hepatofugal flow, and it will be blue. Mm. Hepatofugal flow, and it will be blue. Hepatopetal flow into the liver, the portal vein should always be red. With cirrhosis, the hepatic artery hypertrophies or get, gets large, gets in, increased in size, and you'll have elevated velocities to try to maintain the blood into the liver. So the Doppler waveforms will also change and the hepatic veins will be more like an arterial flow than a phasic flow. Phasic flow means that we can watch the vessel go up and down with respiration, okay? But it's so close to the heart anyway, and if if the blood is not leaving the liver like it should, it's gonna look more arterial than it does for it goes to venous. That's because the liver will exceed the pressure of the right atrium. I won't ask you any of this. This is just showing you how if the liver is not working, the different channels that are collaterals that can build up in the system the portal hypertension. Okay. So here I have hepatocellular carcinoma. I have a cirrhotic liver. It's increased in echogenicity. I have a starry sky and I can see the falciform ligament. Hmm. What is inside the falciform ligament? 
the ligament and fairies. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> so if I do not have that can recanalize and because it was part of fetal circulation, I can fo follow that ligamentum teres all the way down to the belly button. So this person has ascites. It has a capsule that is very nodular. See how it's not smooth? Mm -hmm. So this next image, I have massive ascites. Ooh. I have cirrhosis for sure. I don't see any of the vessels. I, don't, I, heard, I, I see a, a, a few bright echoes. That would mm -hmm. be the portal system. I don't see the hepatic system at all. The liver is decreased in size. That is definitely cirrhosis. Mm. So, Ms. Shefford? Yes. Um, cirrhosis comes with ascites. So, if Usually somebody has always. a bad fall. Usually always. It depends on what stage of cirrhosis that you're in. Okay? With cirrhosis, the gallbladder wall will always be enlarged. With cirrhosis, your caudate lobe will be enlarged. Mm -hmm. Your liver will be small. Your right liver. Mm -hmm. Your right liver. Okay. Okay, your caudate liver will be enlarged. Okay, so here's my IBC going into the heart. Here's my caudate lobe. Here's my ligamentum venosum. This is ascites. This is ascites. This is probably going to be gallbladder. It has a thick wall. So here I have ascites. I have nodules. If I see these nodules, they are hypoechoic. This one have has an inside hilum, so this can be can, considered a bullseye. Anytime you see a bullseye, it is going to be a malignant. Mm. So here I have uh, elevated AFP. If I have an elevated AFP, I always have to have to consider it is an HCC, the hepatocellular carcinoma. So there's this person has a uh, an HCC A and B. Has a cirrhotic liver. They did a biopsy. Biopsies you're going to see whenever you go into interventional radiography. They do those with ultrasound guidance. Okay, okay. So here they have used a linear probe. Okay, a linear probe, like what you would use for a thyroid, but you're probably at a, um, a 12, depending on your patient's size, not, might not penetrate the fat. So uh, if you don't, then you're going to go and do a seven linear like you would use for vascular. Okay. And you can see here that the capsule is nice and thin. Here you can see that the capsule, you lose it right here. You lose it right here and you lose it right here. 
So this is, um, the parenchyma is slightly irregular and that's how we make a diagnosis of sources. Okay? You're only as good as you can run your machine. You'll see sonographers that routinely do this image. Okay? You'll routinely see sonographers use this image. This one is very, very noticeable. So, again, you're using a linear probe. You have ascites, and look how nodular Natural. the capsule is. Okay? The, the liver texture is heterogeneous, but the capsule is nodular. The patient has cirrhosis. Okay. You have to be very, very careful with this. Okay. You can see that the hepatic artery has a corkscrew appearance. And you can see that it's very, very high velocity. Two ways to fix this image. You can go up in your scale. And lower your color gain. Or, or you can go down in your color gain. So there's two ways. You don't want bleeding outside of the portal system. Okay? So you've got to be very careful that you don't turn it down too low because you could, <clears throat> you could miss a thrombosis or if it's very high, you can miss a thrombosis there too. Mm. Okay. So what happens is if I change my depth and that's gonna change my PRF, right mm -hmm. if i change my scale to go higher the color is going to be less sensitive and then you can maneuver that through just your color gain because <clears throat> you don't want to make pathology okay but you don't want to miss pathology either what about a blow uh, blow speed can you uh, change it to blow a uh, slow one Uh, no, the, the speed just has to do with your waveform. No, the you blow. can change the speed of your, uh, uh, what's it called? Your tracing. You're not, you're, you're, you're increasing the speed, your PRF, by decreasing your depth. Because I'm not interested in the whole liver, right? Yeah. I'm only looking at the portal system. Yes, so why do I want to have too much depth when I'm just looking at the portal system? Yes. Okay. Got it? So, so is it safe to use a high frequency transducer when you ingest that portal system you're saying? Okay. The higher frequency transducer will, will also speed up the sound. Right. Okay, so you can also do that, but you've also got to consider the depth that it needs to go. Okay. So it depends on your patient size that you, we always want to use the highest frequency transducer. Okay, but when we change our transducer, we're also changing the, the frequency of the ultrasound. Okay. Okay, let, let me go back. So the hepatic vein should always be red. The hepatic, I mean the hepatic, the portal vein should always be red. And the hepatic system should always be blue. Because blue shows that it is going towards the IVC. Red shows that it's going towards the liver. Now we can change those colors depending upon where wherever you work that you go according to what your radiologist wants. Okay? It's usually red and blue. Okay. So here
here I'm showing that the portal vein is blue. So if it's blue, I have hepatofugal flow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change my direction. I'm going to go more coronal on the patient because I might be too close on top of it. So I'm going to go coronal so I'm shooting down into the vessel. If it's still blue, I'm going to do an I'm going to do a Doppler flow and it should be below the baseline. Mm. Okay. If it's blue, it's hepatofugal. If it's red, it's hepatopetal. It was hepatofugal. I did a blood, I did a Doppler signal and it's below the baseline. So I have confirmed that I have portal hypertension. The liver is too fibrotic to take in any more blood. Did someone ask the question? So that means the liver is not receiving a blood, right? Correct. So if it's not receiving the blood, where is it going? The blood of away, the from, the away from the yeah to the spleen. It's going back to the spleen. Okay, and in return. I'm going to be building a varices at the spleen. I'm going to be, uh, the, I'm going to have collaterals. I'm going to have esophageal pharmacies because God is still trying to get blood into that liver that's too sick to take the blood. So is the spleen acting like the liver in this case? It's like a, no, no, it just gets super, super big. So it's not like compensating. Once it can't hold any more blood, and it starts building up uh, varices. So here you have a spleen with splenomegaly because of portal hypertension. Here I have the aorta. Here, so if I if the aorta is here, what load is this? Uh, left, uh, left lobe, yeah. left lobe. And here I see something that's not right. It's going to have blood flow in it. It is esophageal varices. Okay. And these will be, they look like little squigglies, almost like, a, um, a varicocele when you're doing a, a scrotum, just a, a, a bag of squigglies. But that's what, exactly what it's going to look like. It will fill up with color. Hmm. This patient has portal hypertension. Oh. So, Ms. Shepherd, yes. portal hypertension is a result of liver crosses disease? Correct. One of the reasons, yes. Okay. So this is recanalization of the ligamentum teres. You have a sagittal view in the left upper quadrant showing an anechoic structure. Do not confuse that for the gallbladder. <laughs> Put color on it, it's going to fill up with color. It's going to travel up and then it's going to be traveling down. Okay. So you can follow that all the way right underneath the skin to the uh, umbilical vein, to the umbilicus. So this is just an explanation of the recanalized um, umbilical vein. It is a, a remnant of the umbilical vein. It's inside the falciform ligament. It's also called the round ligament. The ligamentum teres is also called the ligamentum teres, the ligamentum teres hepatis, and a uh, round ligament. 
round ligament divides the left liver into medial and lateral segments. So here is cirrhosis and this is exactly what it looks like. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out these quizzes. Which sonographic feature is a classic sign of a fatty liver infiltration? B. D. B, correct. B. Which sonographic feature is associated with type 1 glycogen storage disease? Hey. What? A. A. Okay. What is the name of type one? Uh, von Gierke. Von Gierke. Yeah, von Gierke. 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 Uh, which sign describes the sonographic finding when the portal vein wall appears more hyperechoic against the hypoechoic background of an adenomous liver? C. Starry star. Correct. C. Starry star. Okay. Okay. What is a double bubble? Uh, Do you know what that is? That's from the baby. <laughs> Correct. You can make that diagnosis with a baby. It's a duodenal or esophageal atresia. Okay. What's it, what's the seagull? The 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 Inflammation. Acute. Acute. If it's acute, it's hypoechoic. If it's if it's chronic, it's hyperechoic. Oh. Okay. What could cause portal venous blood to bypass the liver? To bypass the C? Yeah. What? Of a cyclist? No. A. B? No. C? 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 B. So the portal blood cannot get into yeah, the liver. God's going to open up collateral pathways. Okay. So this is your answer here collateral pathways. That's such a wonderful thing to Okay, and that's it. So tomorrow, if you can read that part of your book, I don't have my book with me. Uh, we'll try to get through, because I'm going to have to read it too. Um, let's go vascular, let's go seven, eight, and nine. If y'all can pre-read that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I'll read it too, and I'll try to update the PowerPoint. Yes, ma'am. Shepherd, I'm sorry, Shepherd, sorry, I'm late. Is this the same book? Is this the green book? Yes. 